Thank you, Mr. Chairman. First, I want to welcome our old friend Dan Coates, and what a pleasure it is to see you. And you were a distinguished senator, but I think you were an even more distinguished director of national intelligence because you showed what uh, honesty and courage in public service looks like. And I've quoted you probably a hundred times on the mission of the intelligence agency. To me, you gave the most succinct definition, which is to seek the truth and tell the truth. And that's exactly what you did. So I want to thank you, thank you. Uh, Senator Coates, Director Coates, for your, for your service. Uh, Ms. Ashton, normally I spend time with IG uh, nominees talking about independence just as we have done today. I don't think that's really necessary with you because you proved it. Uh, you showed that you have both the independence and the courage uh, to do the right thing, uh, to meet the obligations of the job. I just would note that uh, it occurs to me that the IG in a, in a clandestine agency is, is incredibly important. IGs, I think, are some of the most important jobs in our government, but in a secret agency, it's even more important because nobody else is watching. And uh, the, the, they don't have the public level of public scrutiny that might occur for the Department of the Interior, the Department of Energy, the Department of, of Agriculture. So this job is, is especially weighty in its responsibility. Uh, your job is to be a flea on the, on the dog of the CIA. And that means bite them every now and then <laughs> and hold them to the highest level of ethical and legal standards. Um, Ms. Abazid, uh, in terms of terrorism, my greatest nightmare is uh, not a, a terrorist who get through the, the, on an airplane or something like that. It's a terrorist organization that gets hold of a nuclear weapon, whether by development in this technologically advanced age or by purchase from a rogue state. Talk to me about how we we can deter, we have nuclear deterrence for nation states. Deterrence doesn't work for somebody who just as soon give up their life. So how do we protect ourselves from that nightmare scenario? Uh, thank, thank you, Senator. I mean, I, I share the concern. I think all of us, especially in, in the immediate aftermath of 9-11, were terribly concerned about the possibility of terrorists having access to weapons of mass destruction. Those people killed 3,000 people. They would have killed 3 million if they could have. Absolutely. And, and it's absolutely essential that, um, you know, this is an area where uh, the experts in uh, nuclear security, the experts in nonproliferation and counterproliferation, and the experts in counterterrorism need to work across their different areas of expertise and make sure that we're sharing information, assessing threats, and doing everything we can with the highest degree of priority to deter terrorist access to these kinds of weapons of mass destruction. I would submit that one of our first lines of defense is intelligence. Absolutely. Knowing where this material is, knowing, being able to detect where it's being, uh, how it's being transported and where it might end up. So uh, I urge you to pay attention to the nonproliferation uh, regime because uh, this is such a dangerous uh, threat to our country. Uh, Afghanistan, Pakistan, we're about, to, we're in the process of withdrawing. It's been an important counterterrorism base for us over the years. Can we ma maintain the counterterrorism function in that region without a military presence in Afghanistan, and if so, how? So this is something that, um, if, if I'm confirmed, is going to be one of my early questions and early priorities going into the job. I, I think that that is absolutely the most important thing that the intelligence community um, develop a strategy for and an approach to, given the withdrawal of U.S. forces from the region. Um, there will be a diminishment in uh, intelligence collection in the region, no doubt, given the lower footprint from the United States. But... Uh, determining what kind of over-the-horizon capabilities there are, what kind of access to source networks, et cetera, that's got to be a priority given the myriad of threats that already exist in the region and our number one focus being ensuring that that region doesn't become a platform for transnational threats again. Do you, uh, is that a danger? I mean, that we went in in the first place to eliminate it as a safe haven for terrorists. Now we're going to be gone 
uh, how do we keep that? How do we keep from being in 2001 all over again? Well, Senator, I think anywhere that we see a, a significant terrorist presence, uh, there is a danger of that becoming some kind of platform to threaten the homeland from. And I think that that's, that's always the number one priority of CT analysts of the counterterrorism community is to monitor and assess at what point um, you know, we see external plotting from various regions. I think that, that is true for the AFPAC region, just as it is true for the Iraq, Syria, for North Africa, and various other areas where both an ISIS and al-Qaeda presence in particular um, you know, remain. And so uh, how, how we deter it is the way that we've deterred it for years, which is relentless pressure against threats to our interests. And that um, relentless pressure has to continue just because we've pivoted to, toward peer near peer competition does not mean terrorism is in the entirely in the rearview mirror is that correct I couldn't agree more sir thank you thank you mr chairman